So this photograph uh, shows the isolation of the camp. When the government said that they would build internment camps, many politicians who wanted to be rid of Japanese Americans objected and said they didn't want the camps located where they were. So the camps were all sited in desolate areas, places where there really weren't very many people, in the desert, in swamps, places where people didn't want to live. Manzanar was one example. You can see it looks beautiful with the mountains in the background, but that beauty comes with a harshness, a tough physical environment. So the closest towns to Manzanar, Bishop and Lone Pine, were dwarfed by Manzanar. When Manzanar opened up, it was much larger than any of the little tiny towns nearby. And that was true of many of the camps. Because the effort was made to locate Japanese Americans as far away as possible, when the camps opened up, they transformed the local economy. For once, people were able to find jobs by working in the camps if they weren't of Japanese background. When you look at this photo, you also see the barracks, the housing that was uh, built. This was built by the army in some instances, sometimes by volunteers, people who were themselves Japanese Americans, usually men, who went before the families came and helped to build uh, these uh, structures that you see with thin wood walls and tar paper roofs. These structures where families would be all cramped together, where they would be issued numbers and identified in that way, and then they would have a specific block that they would live on. Everything was very orderly because this was originally run by the Army. It was a military effort that uh, was eventually transferred to a civilian government agency, but never before had the U.S. government tried to confine this many people on a mass basis because of race and ethnicity. So when you look at the orderly rows here, you can get a sense of uh, the confinement, a sense that this was a project undertaken by the government, the sort of thing where people were made to live there. As beautiful as the background is, this isn't the sort of place that anyone would volunteer to move, losing everything that they had. And so these photos capture for us a sense of the environment on the one hand and the loss of liberty on the other hand. This photograph is a wonderful, poignant photograph that captures for us how assimilated Japanese Americans were. These were folks who had embraced baseball and apple pie. Before Pearl Harbor, there was an all Nisei League in Southern California. Nisei is the Japanese term for second generation. So these were boys whose mothers sewed baseball uniforms for them out of burlap sacks or whatever they could find because they were of modest means. Or in some instances, if they were lucky, maybe a local hardware store or Baptist church would sponsor them and their uniforms might be a little fancier. And they embraced baseball, a great American game that really captures the spirit of what this nation is about with its teamwork, with its sense of uh, celebrating and being outdoors with people of all backgrounds. Baseball was the type of sport that brought people together that they would listen to broadcast on the radio, on the old Philco, the family might gather around and listen to a ball game. Well, this photograph shows Japanese Americans in the camps enjoying baseball. Not only uh, did they gather in large crowds to watch the youngsters play, but in some instances they were even allowed to travel from camp to camp. And sometimes the baseball diamond would be built out away from the camp, past the barbed wire and armed guards. And You might wonder, well, why, if people were being locked up, would you let them out in that way? Well, in part it shows the amount of trust Japanese Americans were so assimilated that they reported to the camps as a group without protest. 125,000 people, two-thirds of them citizens of this nation, loyal to this nation. There was not a single instance before the camps, during or after, of espionage, sabotage, treason, or any sort of conduct that would cause anyone to think other than race and ethnicity that this was a group that would ever present any risk or problems. And so once they were in the camps, the folks who ran the camps realized, well, 
It's perfectly safe to let Japanese Americans travel from camp to camp to play baseball. That would help maintain order. Plus, if you thought about it, if anyone tried to escape, where would they go? These camps were built in the desert or on swamps in places where there really weren't cities nearby. There were scarcely even towns. And so if a lone Japanese American outfielder suddenly decided he'd had enough and took off, he'd have to walk for days before he reached anything at all. And even then, he would be quickly spotted as obviously different. And so it was that baseball thrived inside the internment camps. And this photograph captures in a wonderful way how even though they'd been locked up by their own government, even though they'd lost liberty, equality, and dignity, Japanese Americans still embraced the great American pastime, still came out to cheer in large numbers as uh, they watched, as they tried to enjoy what they could of the life they recreated.